100th British soldier to Armed die in Afghanistan. have suffered their bloodiest day. A British soldier has died after an explosion in southern Afghanistan. I could tell you how many days, minutes and hours it is before he's going. I'm going to miss so many people. You're actually thinking about your child 24-7. If someone was unfortunately killed, all the phone lines would be shut off. But he has, like his father, an enormous sense of duty. The sudden explosion is going to be uh, bring back haunting memories. I'm Chloe Beckett and this week on Families in Britain we're looking at families on the home front. On today's programme we're talking to Lance Corporal Chris Donaldson, a member of the Territorial Army, who's about to embark on another tour of Afghanistan. His parents, Mel and Bill, spoke to us about what Chris went through adjusting back to everyday life. The day that we, you know, the, the moment that he, he stopped off or got off the, the minibus in Cooper, oh, I can't describe that. It was just amazing. Well, I can't describe it. It was absolutely fantastic. And I have to say, um, shedding tears, which is not a male thing, I shed them in buckets. Overwhelming joy and relief. To be honest, the first person I went to was my mum was the first person and it was just such a relief to see them all and it was just just to give them all a big hug and go that's I know and I didn't have to go back there for a long period of time anyway but just to see them all and it was just quite emotional. Dr Ian Barron, psychologist and trauma specialist from the University of Dundee spoke to me about the process some soldiers go through after a traumatic experience and how this can affect their adjustment back into society. Recurring nightmares um, uh, recurring images coming in. It's not um, remembering the events, it's actually re-experiencing them, being hyper-vigilant, you know, staring, looking for where's the next attack uh, coming from, a kind of exaggerated startle response, um, you know, uh, jumping when there's bags. I was in the middle of the high street in Princess Street in Edinburgh with my girlfriend and uh, the one o'clock gun went off and I remember hitting the shop floor and shouting what the was that in the middle of the shop and everyone stared at me like I was a weirdo obviously not realising I'd just been into a war zone our natural reaction was to take cover and just the shout of the the noise of the bang was like something that happened to us when we were out there, something quite serious and that sort of just resembled it straight in my head, I just took cover and she actually physically had to shake me to, to get me out of it and then left the shop and I was quite tearful Families are briefed on what to expect when their soldiers return but for some, like Chris, the most important thing is knowing somebody is there for you. You know, it's it's got to come down to, is your family going to support you? And that's what you want to have, is them on the side. It was an emotional time for him, but you've got to be strong. He had to be strong for us and we had to be strong for him. Those individuals who have uh, supportive, loving, responsive, caring individuals around them or communities around them, uh, on the whole they tend to fare better. We were actually warned by the army just to leave him and to let him settle uh, and that was difficult because we wanted to show him off. We wanted to say hey look he's back you know come and say hi but Chris on the, on the other hand said look I don't want any of that just please just treat me as if I'm still away and uh, give me give me give me space. I remember his birthday last year and his birthday was his birthday last year was a good seven months after he'd come back and it's, he, um, maybe I shouldn't say this, he broke down in his bedroom. Now he's not a lad that cries, he's a big, big strapping lad. I gave him a cuddle and said, what's wrong? And he said, I just remember my birthday last year was the day after somebody had been killed and he felt guilty for being at home. I think it just brought it all back and he actually said to me, Mum, I saw lots of things that I have never discussed with you and he said, I actually think I need some help. To this day, Chris still says, look, I, I have um, moments where I just want to uh, withdraw and, and think about, you know, my friends and some of the guys that, you know, he left there. Chris, like many soldiers, had trouble adjusting after returning from the war zone. With over 10,000 servicemen and women currently deployed in Afghanistan, one can only imagine how their families are feeling. I always knew that there was a lot of fear for them every day, especially my mum. You become consumed with the thought of, oh my God, it's 11 o'clock here, what time's it out there, what's happening? Every time you hear something on the news, every time you hear something on the radio, you're actually thinking about your child 24-7. You go to bed at night, it's the last thing you think about, it's the first thing you think about in the middle of the night when you wake up. If someone was unfortunately killed, we all the phone lines and internet lines would be shut off 
so that the, the army could contact the families first. I kept every single text message from the army. And in those text messages it would say, <laughs> A soldier's been killed today. If you receive this message, it's not your soldier. Every few days we get a phone call from, from Chris to say, look, I'm well. And when that phone rang, you had that immense um, sigh of relief that, you know, he was, he was there at the end of the phone. The family's support for one another will help Chris while he's away and will be even more important when he returns. I'll leave you with Chris and his final thoughts on leaving. When that time comes, I'm sure we'll, we'll all get through it together and all support each other, which is, you know, which makes it even easier.